All right, so we're going to be hanging a new set of hammers today. So the first thing we've done is um, disassembled the stack from the keyboard. And over here, we've got a set of Premier Arbel Encore hammers, uh, mahogany hammer heads and Arbel natural felt. Now these have been sent to me by Brooks in Connecticut, and um, they provide a very high-end service in terms of uh, the pre-manufacturing of the hammers. So these have been uh, basically weight analyzed uh, to the specifications of this instrument. They have had the tails shaped and been bored to the exact measurements of the existing shanks. And that means that there'll be very little adjustment in terms of weight variation between the original hammers and what's on here. And also in terms of aligning things like the back checks, um, it should be much easier to do checking at a later point. But they do a fantastic job. And uh, if you're interested in using their services, uh, feel free to send me an email or uh, leave a comment. All right, so before we get to putting hammers on, we have to take the old hammers off. Now, as you can see, there's quite a lot of wear to these, but also the main reason we're replacing these is these are from a 1980s Yamaha. They're not necessarily bad hammers, but in terms of manufacturing quality, um, they're not quite up there with what Yamaha produces today. Um, most C-Series from about 2013 on have Wurzen Hammerfeld from Germany, whereas these have more of a kind of entry-level Yamaha domestic um, Product felt, also you find that in terms of age, these are rapidly approaching around the sort of 35, 40 year mark. And you do tend to find that the internal tension of the hammers tend to reduce after a while. So in part because of wear, but also in part because there's much better options available on the market today. And hopefully we'll have a happy customer with the sound of the piano. All right, so we're gonna remove some hammers. This is a Bulldog tool. It's actually part of their uh, side voicing plier setup. It comes with the side voices, it comes with the center pin remover, it also comes with a hammer remover as well. So we basically hook that under the shank and then apply some pressure and that should remove the hammers. What we're going to do here is remove every odd hammer, install every odd new hammer and then do the same with the even to keep the strike point, but I'll talk about that in a second. So I'll just realign the camera so I can show you how we remove the hammers. Alrighty, from this angle we can see that we have the hammer and the shank. Now obviously holding this to protect the integrity of the center pin, we basically just want to push this through here. You'll see that that holds the shank and then align it so that you can actually see the top of the shank protruding through the hammer head and then apply pressure and that just comes off straight like that. So there's a bit of a glue collar here and we'll tidy up the glue collar here and then we'll run through and remove every odd one, then we'll do the installation for that. Now, interestingly, this is a, a 1980s C7 that has the older style scale. I think it's at a 20 base. Yep, so it's a 20 base, which is the uh, close to kind of Model B Steinway design. So as you can see, we have 50% this section uh, hung hammers and 50% old hammers. Um, now just, Looking at this, you'll see there's a line, and when we move out the old hammers, you'll see that uh, we've got a nice little straight line. So just checking here, and if we use this here, we'll see that we're looking pretty good with all of that. It's all looking consistent, it's all wobbling fairly nicely, which is nice. That's a good sign to show that they're all, all aligned. Um, so we'll leave those to dry, we'll move on to the next section. And in terms of angles, we've all sort of set them up so that they're fairly well aligned with the originals, but we will cast them either way at some point. Nice little glue collars there, which makes me feel very happy. A little bit of too much glue there, but we'll sort that out later. All right, so it's probably taken about an hour, hour and a half to do this. As you can see, we've got half the hammers glued. They're all looking pretty even and consistent. The sides, uh, we will space them when they're back in the piano. In terms of the running, there's a little bit of casting to do later on, but we can do that uh, much later down the track. Uh, but overall pretty good. 
This one, there was a slight variation in the bore angle of some of the hammers here. That's just at the front there, and that shouldn't really matter. Uh, but I just want to say, if we pull these off here and have a look, you can see that the line is very consistent. And then we do this here. It's all looking very nice and aligned. So we have all of the even hammers here. Now it's very important to make sure when you're gluing these that you glue one hammer, leave one out, glue another hammer, leave one out. Otherwise it uh, all turns out to be pretty messy pretty quickly. So anyway, we'll uh, leave this for five minutes to dry, go get a cup of tea, and then we'll start uh, popping off even hammers and then uh, re-gluing or gluing the new ones. All right, so it's about 4.30 in the afternoon. I have done some other jobs in the meantime, but we've done basic hanging and alignment of the new hammers. Um, now, as you can see, some of these are a little bit skewed one way or the other. Um, that usually happens in that uh, as they're drying, uh, the moisture in the glue will actually warp things a little bit, so we'll cast those back. They need a little bit of alignment, but overall I'm pretty happy with the consistency of that sort of line. It looks very tidy. A few little gaps here where we'll have to do some spacing, but if we use a set square to have a look here, we're all looking pretty good. Through here, we're looking pretty good as well. Through here, looking pretty consistent, which is good. And then obviously in the base as well, looking pretty good. So we'll give them overnight to dry, and then we'll do some regulation, bench work, uh, some casting, maybe a little bit of uh, traveling as well, and we'll be good to go. Alrighty, guys, so it's day two, and we're halfway through doing some alignment of the dried hammers. I thought I'd show you this little cute toy. It's essentially a Bunsen burner, um, but uh, in the industry it's called a casting lamp. Um, now it's a bit hard to explain and demonstrate uh, with one hand, so I'm just gonna run through and explain the theory. So sometimes hammer alignment can be a little bit skewed when they dry. So what we go through to do is lightly heat the shank underneath and the advantage of that is that it, um, it basically allows you to twist the shank either way and actually realign the hammers, so they're all looking a lot better now. Um, and this being an alcohol burner, alcohol burns at a very low temperature, so you don't leave any sort of singe marks. Maybe the slightest singe mark there, but we'll sort that out before it goes to the customer. Um, and also, uh, we've done some, uh, excuse me, better. Uh, we've also done some hammer filing here so all of these are uh, flush with the tails so we don't have any issues with the back checks. Um, so we just need to do a little bit of traveling of some of the hammers while they're pretty good uh, being a Yamaha and then we'll do the action regulation and put it back in the piano and see what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. 